whenever you guys are ready, can you explain what it is what we're looking at? Yeah, so this is a, um, it's a 3D render of a maze. The maze was randomly generated using the Perms algorithm. And we developed that in Python and then created a way to export it as an OBJ file. And then on our microcontroller, we have basically a 3D renderer that can take any OBJ file, which is a list of vertices and triangles, and then render them in 3D space by projecting them using the position and the angle of the user in 3D space and then rotate them into a way that makes sense in 2D space with the perspective and all that. Um, that's the base of what's going on. We're filling in the shapes based on the distance to the screen. Um, we had, have kind of a fog fall off effect. And the user, user interface is a keypad and a mouse. And instead of using the Pico as a host, um, we're actually externally powering it. No, the Pico is a USB host now, so we're externally powering it. And then mouse and keyboard we just plugged into this USB splitter. And then that's, the USB kind of just works to take inputs. Um, this is absolutely spectacular. So this is a uh, no kidding 3D, this is 3D. renderer. Yep. Um, we had some more complicated 3D models that we put in this, but it would decrease the FPS too much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we navigate the maze here with the keypad mm -hmm. and then re change our orientation by means of the mouse. Yeah. And it should, it should be pointed out that both of these are going directly into the Pico. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Which we're powering off of those five volts. Sure. Yeah, powering off that five volts up there. Unbelievable. So can you talk a little bit about the the colorization here how are you choosing which colors to make which faces um so we have the 16 colors that we get from four bits uh colors uh-huh um for the blue walls there's um we have the six colors to choose from the black white and four shades of blue and um depending on the distance from the camera to the surface it's uh like passes that distance into a lookup table to get the color that we want. I, so as we're looking sort of down a hallway here, mm -hmm. I'm noticing that the blues get darker and darker as they go away, mm -hmm. associated with the depth. And as you approach, not that I know how to, but it'll come into effect and then fade away as you pass off. And then is the same principle being applied in pink? Mm -hmm. at the Okay. Just different cut off areas so we right. don't want to look the same. We picked pink and blue just because there were pinks and blues available to us when you add a fourth bit of green. Sure. Okay. And red didn't add it. That is so impressive. Um, and I'm noticing too that the, I'm not sure the correct vocabulary to use here, but as sort of we move towards a wall and so the vertice ends up behind us, mm -hmm. the perspective all remains correct. Can you describe a little bit how the hell that works? <laughs> uh, yeah, so when, a, ver when a, a vertex moves behind the camera or off the sides of the view, um, we have to cull the triangles, or no, clip the triangles, um, so that there's no geometry outside of the field of view, which uh, is called uh, clipping. Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Well, it turned out to be really complicated, <laughs> and it took a while to get right. Yeah. So, any, because these are just faces of triangles, any triangle that was previously entirely on screen and then goes off screen and gets a new vertice drawn uh -huh. to it, or two vertices depending. So every face, every frame is new triangles, and they'll only ever be within the field of view, so not right or left of the camera. Unbelievable. And our far plane is twice the whole width of this maze so that'll never okay never cut off. see if i can find my way out of here <laughs> one hand that's right i've like memorized the maze at this point <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow okay so here's the exit mm -hmm. and if we walk out of the maze and turn around we can see the exterior of the maze here can we walk around the side of it absolutely so now we're walking up the outside of the maze. <laughs> There's so, the corner. So go around the corner here. And this is yeah. the second way of solving the maze. <laughs> and there's the entrance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we walked out the exit, back around the whole structure, and yeah. back to the entrance. Wow. 
and um am i so so for a while this whole thing existed in sort of a wireframe mm -hmm. look was can you can you how tricky was it to go from a wireframe representation for this maze to the colorized version that we're looking at now um, not the trickiest thing we had done but definitely an amount of thinking need, was needed to okay yeah something we had to add was the z buffer which stores basically for every pixel in the view uh how far is the nearest surface from the camera which with the idea being that if you have a triangle and it's farther away than that then you don't render it okay so like right now for instance this view that we have of the maze mm -hmm. there's sort of a wall and a passage back here it seems yep. a wall and a passage here and then mm -hmm. a wall here and what am I trying to say here? So it, it is the case that the near stuff is being drawn over the far stuff, and that's being implemented with that Z buffer? Yeah. So is it being is it being rendered sort of back to front, or is it something more complicated than um, that? The order in which the triangles themselves are uh, drawn to the screen is mostly random. Um, but it's just that the ones that are in front end up uh, being overriding anything that's behind Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the walls that are kind of not shown because they're behind another wall are technically being rendered to drawn over. Okay. Okay. And I'm noticing that you're indicating up here the a measurement of the speed with which you render each frame. Yeah. And it's it's fast enough that it feels as I move this mouse around it's mm -hmm. completely reactive. It's been a nice measure to see every as we add for example triangle shading how it impacts the frame rate or as we yeah. add clipping does that make the frame rate better or worse? Sure. It's nice to see that progress as the project did. Wow, really neat. And then from so from a hardware perspective just to mm -hmm. briefly summarize. Oh yes. Uh USB keyboard and mouse. Yep. And then can you just sort of walk me through the connections here? Yeah, so user interface goes into this USB splitter, all just USB-A types. Um, and then this we plug into what ends up being USB-A to USB-A through a weird breakout board okay. homogeny. We're connect connecting power to power, ground to ground, diff pair to diff pair, just as is. Um, I was kind of curious about any noise implemented by crossing the diff pair kind of far apart, but it's been fine. Okay. Um, and this just goes right into the pico yep and then power ground and then vga and then the vga connections mm -hmm. of course which go directly into the vga connector there yeah. and up to the screen this circuitry up here is what we needed to externally power the pico the diode is so that we don't put any power to the computer for interfacing with it or into the pico where it doesn't need to be right i mean that is so incredibly impressive. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you both. Anything else either you want to say about it or is that about sum it up? I'm, I'm happy. I'm using almost all the memory on the Pico. That's almost true. all the memory on the Pico. Okay. Oh, I do want to talk about the resolution. Oh, okay. That yeah. was the first thing. First thing we had to do, cut the resolution in half both ways so that we could fit two frames at a time on, into the memory because we're doing double buffering you're well. double buffering we're double buffering okay so while the next frame is while one frame is being drawn the next one's being computed because we thought that there would be a lot of clipping and stuff going on we yeah. were right it prevents like the there's no black like mm -hmm. flash and, and if our resolution 6 40 by 480 and we have two frames stored that is more than the pico can store yeah yep. we only have 260. So you dropped your resolution to 320 by 240 so yes. that you could store, yeah. so that you could double buffer the frames. Mm -hmm. We did that by modifying the PIOs. So every, so every pixel here yep. is two. a two by two collection mm -hmm. of pixels. Each pixel horizontally just takes a little bit longer. And then we have two state machines drawing alternating rows such that it can be duplicated. Right. That was you, probably you the You modified the VGA. Yep. God, that feels like so long ago I'd forgotten that even <laughs> occurred. But yeah, you modified the VGA driver to do mm -hmm. that. And that's what freed up. Then, then each frame takes up a quarter of the memory because we cut within height by half. And now we can do things like the Z buffer and the clipping to have memory for it. Yeah. With all that, I think we're up to 220 kilobytes yep. out of the 260. Incredible. Really awesome demo. Thank you both. That is just so cool.